Hello out there. This is Lucas Carroll from the Business of Senior Care. Hope everybody's having a great day. I am here with another video. This is part two in the video series of the survey and plan a correction process. If you are a home care owner and operator, you know all too well uh, what this means and most likely your least favorite topic when it comes to running a home care company is uh, working with uh, having to go through the survey process. Um, no uh, less fun feeling than when you hear at the front desk, which I've heard many times of, hello, uh, my name is so-and-so, I need to speak to the administrator, I'm from the health department, dun-dun-dun. Um, but uh, while it, it can be a stressful process, uh, there are many tips and resources and, and, and tricks that uh, I would love to share with you from over the years and working, working through the survey process and developing a wonderful plan of correction that you can get accepted on that first time, uh, work through the plan of correction, and get back to operating your business. Um, today, we are talking about uh, the timeline, the overview for a, a survey. Of course, you all know it starts with that surveyor walking in the door or calling you on the telephone if it's an e-complaint to let you know that uh, the survey has started. Uh, from that point, it's working with that survey, uh, working in the survey with the surveyor, multiple surveyors, um, through the survey process, uh, getting documents that they need, getting them timely information, uh, arranging interviews, client home visits if needed, uh, and, and files to be reviewed, and, and everything that they need in a timely manner in order to complete their survey. And then at the conclusion of the survey, there's the survey exit, where it's typically a sit-down meeting between the surveyor and the administrator, agency manager, just to share with you the areas of concern. Uh, where they don't always tell you exactly what they might be looking to cite for deficiency wise but at least you know what areas of concern they might have then after the survey is over uh, you are waiting for 10 um, business days uh, within 10 business days to receive that statement of deficiencies where you can review and see which deficiencies were issued and after that of course you move into the plan of correction so the plan of correction is where you're developing a plan in which you'll fix uh, in the identified issues uh, from your agency and, and communicate to the health department how you're going to fix it and then how you're going to monitor it so that it won't happen again. Then once you submit that plan of correction, then it's reviewed and then it's either accepted or potentially rejected by the health department uh, with uh, the areas that they might want you to fix. But eventually the hopes are you get the plan of correction accepted then after it's accepted, you get a deadline in which that you need to submit that uh, compliance documentation. So they wanna know not only did you do the plan of correction, but for all the documentation that you uh, received, that you uh, produced in order to complete the plan of correction, they wanna see a portion of it. Usually it's not all of it, but they wanna see a portion of it to make sure that you're doing the plan of correction and that you are fixing the issues that they addressed. So once you submit, the compliance documentation that's reviewed and that's the final step is uh, putting your agency back in compliance uh, so that you can continue to operate with your license uh, and that you've corrected all the deficiencies and that you can move forward so that's an overview of the process for survey uh, and what we'll do from here in the next videos is is break up each component talk a little bit more in detail and then also I'll be sharing uh, tools and resources and tips and getting through the process and working with the surveyor, developing a plan of correction and everything else that you might need um, in order to get through the process. So uh, 